now comes the most important topic prompt corrective action framework okay prompt corrective action framework see after this session please go and read the uh, news articles which i have shared yesterday the two or three uh, factual things see either they can ask you a concept based question or a factual based question factual based question they will ask you which of the banks is under which of these are pca banks or which of these banks have been removed from the bca list etc okay so if that is they are asking be very careful you need to make some formula to answer that type of question okay now <coughs> regarding this prompt now things become easy for us okay many concept we already discussed prompt corrective action framework it was introduced by rbi it was introduced by rbi uh, in the early 2000 okay but it have become more stringent after the april 2017 revision okay so after the april 2000 revision it see it has taken into consideration the recommendation of basel norms it has introduced certain uh, parameters and it has increased its uh, implementation so in in relation to this uh, prompt corrective action framework what again you need to understand is that this framework was set by rbi to prevent indian banks from failure to go bust okay so it will so keep this in mind based on the each parameter there will be a risk threshold is there risk threshold risk 1 risk 2 risk 3 so in risk see as the risk of a bank increases rbi put many restrictions so try to understand that pca banks are what type of banks they are weak banks they are weak they are financially weak they are not profit making they are having high npa etc so these bank how to be brought into normal for that rbi will not do them to do any risk what rbi will do in regarding pca bank is that they will bank will monitor rbi will monitor whether these banks are doing any risky business in that case they will not allow them to do any risky business and the regulation or the stringent stringency or the higher regulation will increase as you move as a bank moves from risk 1 to risk 3 and finally what will happen is that if the if any bank is there in the risk 3 what finally what rbi will say that either you have to liquidate that bank or merge that bank this has happened in the case of dena bank dena bank was a pca bank it was very difficult to recover this bank so that why then a bank was merged with for the in, in india is the first three way merger there have been two way merger and other thing first three way merger okay so this is again this question can also happen okay i told you that bank of baroda a strong bank vijaya bank another strong bank then a bank weak bank very weak bank was merged so once then a bank was merged with uh, this bank of baroda what happened bank of that its customer got relief okay because it's all almost all the parameters have become normal so they were automatically out of the pca framework okay that also you need to again i told you this revise the public sector banks revise the public sector banks because again uh, when after this uh, introduction of this pca revised pca framework there were only 12 banks were put under the, this is a very important point i'm the fact only only 12 banks were put under pca list pca watch list or weak bank list out of this 12 11 are public sector banks only one private sector bank is there only one private sector bank and that bank belongs to kerala dhan lakshmi bank <laughs> in that way you can remember dhan lakshmi bank but recently in march i think in february february or march february or march dhan lakshmi bank have been removed from so now presently there is only public sector banks in it no no one more so new person have come join the private bank idbi bank see initially out of this 12 banks when rbi put the 12 banks one was idbi bank so when rbi put idbi bank under this uh, pca list it was a public sector bank now it is a private sector bank so now presently see this have an idea will i'll discuss in detail so we have to know it okay we very and read the question carefully when a question has been asked okay so the first we will read the i means understand the concept and on what basis so you know the reason why 
PCA framework brought in by RBA to protect the weak banks. Okay, so it was this list or this framework was adopted by RBA in 2002 and it was revised in April 2017. Okay, so basically what RBA will do for the weak bank, it will put in place some trigger points. It will based on the trigger points. Once you cross the trigger point, will be automatically put under the list. We'll see that what are the to basically to it will assess, monitor, control, and take corrective actions on banks which are weak and troubled. Okay. What UPC can do? They will change it. They will say that this is for strong banks. PCA banks from the so like that some keywords they will use it. Okay. This active pro, pro, corrective action framework is only for weak and troubled bank. Okay. Now we will see that what are the PCA norm says that automatically. Okay. There are three factors are there. Okay. There are three factors are there in the revised thing form of a fourth factor was also added. But still the three dominant parameters, financial parameters which RBA look into for trigger is trigger. We see there are three trigger. Trigger 1, trigger 2, trigger 3. For risk 1, risk 2, risk 3. So the first trigger, okay, we will discuss, okay. The first trigger is again, this is what I want. See the capital adequacy ratio. First trigger is, first trigger is capital adequacy ratio or another name for first trigger is capital adequacy ratio another name is capital to risk weighted asset ratio when it was revised april in this time period what was the uh, capital adequacy ratio now 9 percentage plus what is the capital conservation buffer at that time 1 point april first april eh? 1.25 See 1.875 is present. So this word you be okay. So it should be 10 point capital adequacy ratio. Any bank, any bank who is having a capital adequacy ratio. See in the revised. See the two things you need to keep in mind. Every bank should have a cap. Presently, every bank should have a capital conservation buffer of 1.875. But in the PCA framework, when RBI framed the PCA framework in April 2017, 16-17, what was the CCA buffer? 1.25. 15-16, see, CCB, 15-16, 16-17, it has taken into consideration the financials of 16-17. It can't have the 17-18 financials. So, in 16-17, the bank should have 1.25 capital conservation buffer and 9 percent. So, that is why this is 10.25. Okay. So, depending upon the question, if they are considering capital conservation buffer, 10.25. If it is just taking only capital adequacy ratio, it is 9 percentage. This is the trigger point for first trigger point. If your capital adequacy ratio is less than if the, it is go below, that is one parameter because you know the importance of capital adequacy ratio and capital adequacy ratio have to be high. That is first parameter. Second is net non-performing asset. What they can do? They can give you many, instead of net non-performing assets, if UPSC want, want really to trouble you, they can give you gross and you will not see net 10 gross, you will see only non-performing assets and you take it by saying that, oh, I made it correct. So be very careful. It is net. We discuss what is the difference between provisioning. Okay, net non-performing asset. Great. If if a bank, if a bank, second trigger point. If a bank net performing, no sorry, net non-performing assets increases more than six percentage, that is the second trigger point. Okay, and third one is return on assets. See. Banks as assets. What are the major banks assets? Loans or investment in government securities. So the, if the return on assets is negative, means return on assets means there is no profit losses, two consecutive losses. So for the third, see this is trigger one is two consecutive losses. You will be under threshold one. Three con year consecutive losses threshold two. Four year consecutive losses you will be under threshold three. Like that. Not see, they will not go for threshold one, threshold. Just have an idea how it is moving. So, 
these were the three not see in the earlier PCA framework only three were there but leverage ratio was added but not as a predominant thing but it is there leverage ratio is still there okay but the predominant three parameters are three capital adequacy ratio net non-performing assets return on assets which they say that if there is two consecutive losses trigger is there and fourth one is leverage ratio we know what is leverage ratio it is again calculated by based on Tyrone capital divided by total assets and here see leverage ratio is 4 percentage leverage ratio should be 4 percentage and high in the case of Basel it is 3 percentage for us leverage ratios so it is also saying that okay the tire one capital okay your leverage should not be 25 times over see it should be it should be up to 25 times the, the leverage should be the 25 times to the tire one capital so leverage ratio leverage ratio if it is go below 4 percentage it is also a concern okay but the 3 1 2 and 3 are the most important but have an idea leverage ratio is also there now interestingly why the government is blaming RBI is that internationally other banks don't take many uh, parameters financial parameters it will take only one parameter that is regarding PCA is involved on single parameter what is that single parameter capital adequacy ratio globally many central banks implement only one parameter to evoke this prompt corrective action framework but in India we are having that's why RBI as a central bank is much more strict towards Indian banking system that's why Indian banking system is quite strong even during hard time okay so these uh, things see these parameters are very 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 important 99 percentage you will get a question on PC now an interesting thing point to note down is that okay PCA framework this stringent PCA framework is applicable only to commercial banks we discuss what is a commercial bank okay this is PCA framework is applicable only to commercial payment not it is not extended to cooperative banks see there are two categories of banks only commercial banks and cooperative banks so to applicable only to common so it is not applicable to cooperative bank uh, so cooperative banks then NBFC no no NBFC and no other financial institutions okay so they can give you PCA another simple question this can be a potential question so it is applicable only to commercial banks commercial banks now see there will be I told you there are many limitations are there many limitations are there based on which threshold a bank is based on so they they will not ask you threshold one and threshold two and threshold three just have an idea okay so what are the restrictions if you are a weak bank you know that loan is always a risky business so what RBI will do is that RBI will first tell them to correct your financials and then only start doing normal business okay PCA does not stop a bank from lending don't think that okay PCA does not stop a weak bank from lending it stop a bank from lending to risky risky loans it stops lending to risky loans not for any loan okay it can continue lending but no risky related high risk related loans okay now so banks are not allowed to renew or access costly deposit it is the point if you comes under this list you are not you cannot renew or access costly you can access deposit but not costly deposit means you are offering a high interest rate deposit rate and taking money no or take steps to increase the fee based income okay this is actually a punishment okay <coughs> for the means you cannot go for increase the fee based income or you cannot access costly deposit second thing is that okay it should take a special drive to reduce NPA because NPA is a major factor okay NPA what is the trigger limit for NPA greater than a net NPA 6 percent okay so they have to reduce that and also contain generation of fresh NPA no more fresh existing NPA should be brought down no more or you should be very careful regarding fresh NPA and it will not be allowed to enter new lines of business weak bank no, no new business and there will also be restrictions on borrowings in the interbank market and in the higher side higher side what it will uh, restrictions will come is that okay regarding there will be lending restrictions will be there higher side lending restrictions 
okay and even there will be restrictions in regarding increasing the salary of uh, higher executives like that so it can go this restriction because RBI enjoy many discretionary restrictions for these weak banks so there are many restrictions keep these are the major restrictions okay now look into this actually I told you this is not that important so these are the three see in the threshold limit okay these risk one risk two risk three see here in the risk threshold one okay if you see that cap breach of the either CRO or CT1 any if you breach any of these two if you breach any of these CRR or capital adequacy ratio capital adequacy what is the CT1 requirement CT1 requirement is 5.5 plus what is the additional thing 1.25 okay so be very clear so this is how this 6.75 minimum 6.75 because only half of the capital conservation buffer is implemented in the PCA framework. These things not important. Just I am telling that I told you this. Why in this 9 percentage? 9 percentage is if it is taking into consideration capital adequacy ratio. If it is if it's using the word okay, CET1, then be very careful. Okay, they are using two words. They are using the two words. One is capital adequacy ratio. Capital adequacy ratio is 10.25. CET1 is 5.5 plus 1.25. That is 6.75. And then it, if it is go to threshold 2 and threshold 3 like that. Lower than. Not important. Okay. Asset quality. Again <coughs> more than 6 and 9. 6 to 9 regarding net non-performing asset. 6 to 9. 9 to 12. And more than is say if your net non-performing assets is about 12 percentage threshold 3, then a bank reached all the three thresholds. Profitability return on assets, two consecutive year loss, three consecutive year loss, for four consecutive year loss, two, three year. Last one is leverage ratio. If it is if the leverage ratio is uh, less than 4. Up to 3.5, three, then again less than 3.5. First four parameters are there. This was the fourth parameter added. Okay, I don't think so. UPC will go for these things if they are asking. They are so cruel. But just <laughs> okay. But anyway, if you have the logic in mind, if you know the concept, if you revise it, you can answer it. But keep this in mind. This is very very important. And for your Tuesday test, prepare this topic also. See now, I think this, uh, this if anybody want, uh, uh, you can note down. Okay, see there are different. See the restrictions. Restriction one is <coughs> for Indian bank. Okay, there will be a restriction on dividends. Foreign banks. It, this is case for foreign banks. It's not any no foreign banks have come under it. Okay, <coughs> then RBA can have any discretionary. All the three cases. There will be restriction actions by the regulator. Restrictionary action is regulator here is RBI. So from the beginning itself, dividends restriction will start. The shareholders will be having in this threshold to branch expansion will be see branch expansion is a restriction. Restriction on branch expansion where in threshold to higher provisioning norms means the bank have to go for higher provisioning if it is in threshold to why higher provisioning because your net 10 pay is higher then here dividend branch expansion then there is restriction on management compensation higher executives salary there will be restrictions in threshold 3 director fee restrictions so just have an idea regarding the different restrictions thresholds and corrective action now just this is actually the entire public sector banks so all the uh, public sector banks and if you look into the color this threshold 3 color okay if you see this <coughs> if you look into the uh, mini banks <coughs> threshold 1 threshold 2 threshold 3 look into see the idbi bank mini banks are at regarding asset quality see the quality asset quality capital to risk weighted adjusted ratio 
common equity tier 1. See, leverage ratio, leverage ratio sometimes will be written in this form also. Just have an idea, okay. Return on assets, okay. Common equity tier 1, leverage ratio is explained in that way. Just have an idea this. Some, if you look into only, see, from this, you can identify the strong banks, okay. Forget about the weak bank. Identify the strong bank. This color, no threshold bridge. This color is, blue color is Bank of Baroda, strong bank. I told you now Bank of Baroda is the second largest public sector bank. Okay. Then, very interesting thing, Japan Kashmir Bank, Indian Bank, State Bank of India, Vijay Bank. That's why, so two strong banks merged with a weak bank. See, IDBI Bank, you see, it's all, all these things it has bridged. Once in uh, threshold 3, it's there. Yuko Bank, see the condition of Yuko Bank. See Yuko Bank. <coughs> Just have an idea. So, what are the strong banks? Just Bank of Baroda, Vijay Bank, SBI, Jammu and Kashmir Bank, Indian Bank. Only few strong banks are there. Now, <coughs> just for your... Uh, in as per this gross NPA, okay, this is word gross NPA. Uh, to the total loan, gross assets, gross NPA is highest for IDBA bank. So, and most of these, these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. These are the 11. Initially, I told you initially when they were put under weak banks, these are the 11. Public sector bank. See, Dhanalakshi Bank, it's a private sector bank. That's why we are not introduced it, okay. Now, <coughs> now regarding their history, okay. Now, you need to keep in mind who are still in the PCL list. Who are still there in the PCL list, okay. IDBI Bank is still there. Still there. Now, there is only, see. Initially, there were 12 bank. 11 public sector bank. 1 private. Now, presently, Presently, there is only 5 banks. Presently, there is only 5. 4 public sector bank. And 1 private. What is this present 1 private? IDB. Here, which was the private? Then let's move now that, that related to news articles. Okay. Now, see the updation. See, in December 2018, there were 12 banks. In January 31st, this was... Three banks, three public sector banks were removed in January. See, read the article, okay, news article which I have shared, okay. January 31st, 2019, Bank of India, Bank of Maharashtra and Oriental Bank of Commerce were removed from the PCA list. Now, why they were removed? On what condition they were removed, okay. So, because government have made capital infusion. Government have made capital infusion so when capital infusion has been made equity capital is been made they were able to increase means raise the capital adequacy ratio and they were able to use some amount for promotioning and bring bring down net NPA see net NPA bringing out is not a good thing we have to reduce the gross NPA because net NPA how you are bringing net NPA by provisioning by taking away the profit that's not a good sign okay so that you need to, so recapitalization is very, very, very important, okay. Yesterday, I have shared a, a comprehensive article regarding this banking sector, you please. There are four R, four R regarding the uh, recognition, okay, recognition of a bad asset is very important, okay. Then, resolution, recognition, resolution, recapitalization, four R, okay, and reforms. Recognition, we have to recognize that is bad banking sector is having a problem. Then, resolution, weak bank should be resolved, means bad assets, bankruptcy code is helping it. Recapitalization, make it recapitalization, recapitalize the banks. What is recapitalization? Bank should be given necessary required capital, regulatory capital. So, who in what context is recapitalization there from the public sector bank? Private sector bank don't have any problem. They are not put under the PCA list. And finally, reforming the sector. This merger and all these things is part of merger. Reforming only. Then, 
in February 26, 2019, three banks were again removed. See, in January 3, all the three were public sector bank. In February 3, two private sector and Dhanalakshmi Bank was removed along with Dhanalakshmi Bank. Private bank was removed from the list. Corporation bank, Allahabad bank was removed from the list. So, and then what happened with Dana Bank? Merged with Bank of Baroda. So, from 12, from 12 in 3 months, all Golmal, okay. <laughs> Not in the, uh, From 12 banks, it was 5 banks, 4 public sector bank and meanwhile, IDBI was privatized LIC takeover. Now, which are the 4 banks presently? United Bank, Yuko Bank, Central Bank of India, Indian Overseas Bank. There is a high chance these banks will get merged. This is the only solution. <laughs> merged with any a strong bank. Most probably SBI. Now, Bank of Baroda is over. Now, other which is left now? Most probably it is SBI is the, the thing which have to take over all these banks. Okay, let's see it. Okay, just again. Now, because of this PCA, these public sector banks are in news. Okay, at least have an idea. Yuko Bank is a public sector bank. We already seen a question which of the following is not a uh, private bank, sorry, it's not a public sector bank. What is that? Which was the question was? It's a nationalized bank, like that. They can ask you which of the following is not a public sector bank or which of the following is a private bank. Factual question also they can ask based on this PCA banks. Like that they can ask you which of the following is a present PCA. These are the four public sector bank and IDBI bank which is the in the PCA list. So PCA bank now only five. So if this has happened in uh, January and February. So, your PC questions have not been set. So, when the question is set, these are the banks. So, revise it.